Hi, welcome back to McClutchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClutchy and today we are continuing our consumer arithmetic series by talking about dividends. In this particular series, you're going to find out what a dividend is, how to calculate dividends per share, dividend yield, price to earnings ratio, and then we'll talk a little bit about what's coming up in our future video series. This particular video series is aimed at senior mathematics students, particularly those studying Year 11 in Queensland in general mathematics, but also students who may be studying senior business and adults who may be starting out looking at investing on the stock market. Many businesses operate as companies. When a company is founded, each owner contributes an amount of money to purchase their share in the business. Companies can be privately owned. Other companies can be owned by the general public. These companies are called limited companies if listed on the stock exchange. The stock exchange is a place where shares in a publicly listed company can be bought and sold. These companies exist to make profit for their shareholders, the owners in the company. Shareholders buy shares as a form of investment with the hope of making their investment grow in value. The price of a share will fluctuate from day to day. This happens due to many factors, such as how profitable a business is or is expected to be, or based on recent price trends, or based on news or rumours about the company in the media, including social media platforms. Companies will share or distribute some of their profits with shareholders up to four times a year. This distribution of the profits is called a dividend. Dividends are provided as a price per share, such as a dividend of three cents for every share owned. Business analysts conduct a number of calculations using dividends and share prices to determine if purchasing a company's shares is a wise investment. We will examine a few of these calculations in the upcoming worked examples. In our first worked example, Daniel owns 300 shares in a clothing company. There are 125,000 shares in total. We need to calculate the percentage of the company that Daniel owns. So firstly, let's think about this in terms of a formula. The percentage that he owns will be the number of shares that he owns divided by the total number of shares. That will give us an answer as a decimal and we need to multiply that by 100 to change it into a percentage. So let's substitute that information into the formula now. 300 divided by 125,000 times 100 gives us a percentage ownership of 0.24% of the company. So he actually owns less than 1% of the whole clothing company. Now, this is a formula that is more of an intuitive formula. It's not one that you're going to find on a formula sheet anywhere. So it's probably one you would need to memorize or at least know how to calculate this kind of thing. Let's look at our second worked example. A new company wishes to raise $8 million to explore the Kimberley region for gold. They plan to sell 200,000 shares. Calculate the starting price per share. Now this is something that companies typically do when they're starting up, is they want to raise money to be able to start the company somehow. So they um, basically issue shares to potential shareholders and those shareholders decide to invest in the business. So our starting price per share is going to be the total amount of money that needs to be raised divided by the number of shares that the company is willing to issue. So now we substitute the $8 million and divide that by 200,000. Now probably some people may find it a little bit complicated to know how many zeros to put on the million. Just remember that um, 100,000 has five zeros a million has six zeros. So now if we put that on our calculator, we're going to find that the starting price per share is equal to $40. And I'm going to stop a little bit here and put my teacher hat on now and just remind you that when you're doing these kind of calculations, it's important that you use some words to describe the calculation that you're actually doing. It may not be necessary to write a full formula out like I've done. I've produced that formula for you today to show you that where we're going with our calculation. However, it is important that your final answer has some words around it especially when your calculations change directions or that you're using parts of a previous calculation for a future calculation. Those extra words communicate a lot to the person reading your response. We're going to introduce you now to a formula that's an important formula. We're talking now about dividends per share. Dividend is that distribution we talked about earlier of the profit that's paid out to the shareholders at different times throughout the year. So the total amount of profit shared divided by the total number of shares will give us a dividend that is paid to each shareholder per share. So we're going to use that formula now. It's not a formula that you're going to find on your formula sheet either, so it's one that you need to remember. 
worked example three, a company decides to share $380,000 of their profit with their 2 million shareholders, calculate the dividend payable. So we're gonna use that formula that we had on our previous slide, the total profit to be shared, divided by the total number of shares. Now it's important to remember that just because a company makes a certain amount of profit doesn't mean they have to share all of it with their shareholders. So in some cases you need to read the question carefully and decide if all of it's being shared or only a portion of it. In this case it's all of it. We're going to take that 380,000 and divide that by 2 million and we get a dividend of 19 cents per share. That could be presented as either with the dollar sign as a portion of a one dollar per share or you could present that in cents as well. So it's important that you um, have a think about what will be the most appropriate way for you to communicate that information. Our next worked example, I alluded to this a little bit earlier, when a company decides not to pay out all of their profits to shareholders. And one reason why companies might decide to do that is that they may wanna reinvest some of that profit into the business so that they continue to make that business grow. If a company was to spend all of its profits by distributing it all to shareholders, there'd be nothing left for them to take on new ventures or increase their marketing programs in future years. So in this case, we've got a company who's made a profit of $450,000 and they've decided to pay half of it as a dividend at 20 cents per share. We need to use this information to calculate the number of shares in the company. So we're kind of working a little bit backwards in this case. So we'll pull up that formula that I showed you earlier the dividends equal to the profit that is shared divided by the total number of shares. Now in this case, we are only sharing half of our profit. So we need to work out what that half is. So I'm gonna say, let the number of shares be equal to X. And that way I can work through this with a little bit of algebra and not too many words cluttering up my formula. So now I've got the 20 cents per share. Now that was given in cents, but everything else is in dollars. So I'm changing that into dollars. 0 0.2 is equal to the 450,000 profit. We're going to halve that by dividing it by two. And we're going to divide that by X, which is the total number of shares. And that's what we need to find. So now let's do some transposing, which means rearranging of our formula. We're going to multiply both sides by X. Um, firstly, though, I've halved that profit on the top, that, that numerator of my fraction, and then I'm going to move that x to the other side of the equation by multiplying both sides of the equation by x. I still haven't got x all by itself though, x is now multiplied by 0.2, so now I need to divide both sides of the equation by 0.2, and I'll have x all on its own, and now I can get my calculator out and work out that the total number of shares is 1,125,000 shares altogether. So it's also important that you remember with your final answer, we've calculated a number of shares. We haven't calculated money this time. So don't be tempted to throw that dollar sign on there. It doesn't belong in this example. Now let's look at another formula. We're gonna look now at some ways that shareholders or potential shareholders analyze companies to decide if that's gonna be a good investment or if it's an investment they want to avoid. So our first measure today is called dividend yield. It's the dividend that is received per share divided by the share price times 100. So basically what we're calculating is what percentage of our share price is actually paying us a profit. It's like a profit um, per share price, kind of. Now yield means the amount given or the amount produced. So we're looking at how much that dividend is making us a return on our investment. So this is something that interests investors in particular to see if the investment is worth their time. Now this is a formula that is on your formula sheet if you're in Queensland, the QCAA provide this one to you. So you don't need to memorize this one, which is great news for all of us. Let's see how it works in an example. ABC Limited shares sell for $18.22. They pay an interim dividend of 53 cents. Calculate the dividend yield. Now you've seen some new words in here, interim dividend. All that means is that it's a dividend that's paid during the year, not at the end of the financial year, which is usually what's called the final dividend. So you may have remembered earlier in the video, I did mention that sometimes companies can pay dividends up to four times a year. And usually those in-between ones are called the interim dividends. So let's bring our formula 
formula back from our formula sheet and we're going to substitute some information in there. We've got our dividend per share of 53 cents divided by $18.22 and we multiply that by 100 and I think you get the idea this is going to be a percentage answer. Our dividend yield is 2.91 percent it's a percentage because we multiplied it by 100. We actually found out what proportion of the share price is made up of dividends. So that's a dividend yield of 2.91 percent. Now you might be wondering is that good or is that bad? And the answer is it's all relative. Usually you make this um, decision in comparison to other dividends. So you would compare others to the ABC Limited shares. And the idea is, is that the bigger the dividend yield, the better. So if you had to make a choice between two, you'd go for the one with the higher yield. Now I should give you a little note of caution here. There are many different measures that investors use to analyze shares and this is only one of them. And very few investors would actually just analyze one in isolation like we're doing today. So that's important to remember that you would never just go and invest based on this measurement alone. Let's look at another worked example. This one's a little bit more complicated. Sophia is unsure whether to buy X limited shares for $5.35 with a dividend yield of 2% or P limited shares for $20 paying a dividend of 89 cents. If the only measure she's interested in is dividend yield, which company should she invest in? So you'll notice straight away that X Limited and P Limited have share prices that are very different. One's a relatively cheap price and one's a much more expensive price. And one of them gives a dividend yield as a percentage and the other one we've told what it is in dollars. So what we really need to do is change the one of them or both of them into something where we can compare. We're actually going to change P Limited's um, information into a yield so we can compare X to P. So firstly we're going to write our formula down. Now that doesn't mean dividend yield take away P limited, that's just the dividend yield for P limited. And we're going to substitute that information in, the 89 cents divided by the $20, multiply it by 100 and we get 4.45%. So straight away we see that the P limited company is a clear winner if we're using just this measurement to compare. So now we need to write a statement. Sophia should invest in P limited because the dividend yield is higher by 2.45%. That's just simply 4.45 less 2%. Now, when you're giving your final statement, it is very tempting to just write P limited. But it's important that you actually give a reason why, because often on a marking scheme, there's a, there's a mark given not just to the answer that you give, but also to the reason that you provide. Let's introduce our final measurement today for the video, price to earnings ratio. So as I mentioned earlier, investors do look at a range of different kinds of measurements to compare different companies to one another. And this is another measure. It's called price to earnings ratio. And it looks at the market price per share. Now, this is not the same as the price when the company first started up and offered the share on shares on the share market because typically they'll start with a starting price and then over time the market will determine what the new price will be so share prices change all throughout the day every day so this is the market price at the time of calculating the ratio and we divide that by the annual earnings per share so that's the profit the company makes divided by the number of shares in total this is a formula that's on your QC day QCAA formula sheet if you're in Queensland, lucky you. So it's important that you don't, remember you don't need to memorize this. However, you'll notice that on the denominator of this fraction, annual earnings per share is something that may be given to you, but it may be something you'll have to calculate. So for worked example seven, calculate the price to earnings ratio for a company whose shares are $11.86 per share and there's an annual earnings per share of $2.26. So just looking at our formula here, we actually don't need to do any extra calculations. We can simply substitute the information straight into the formula. And we find our price to earnings ratio is 5.3. Now, because it's a ratio, there's no units of measurement. So don't put dollar signs or percentages on this one. Just leave it as a number. And if you get an answer with like 15 decimal places, make sure you're using some discernment and round that down to two probably at the most. 
Let's look at our final worked example here. It's a complex one. Pankti wishes to buy shares currently priced at $2.55 and reads that they have a PE ratio of 2.8. You probably read that on the internet or the newspaper. Now, if there are a million shares in the company, calculate the annual earnings. So we're going backwards here again using our formula. So let's start with our formula here. The price to earnings ratio is given to us 2.8. We've got the current price, which is our market price, $2.55. And we know there's a million shares, but we don't know what the annual's earnings are. So there's a bit of a component of extra calculation on our denominator. So we're going to do this once again and can transform that denominator into an extra step. It's annual earnings in total divided by the number of shares. So now we've got a little bit of information we can add. And I'm going to call those annual earnings X because otherwise we've got too many words going on here. So we're going to use the variable X to explain what we're looking for. So that means at the very end, we're going to have to give a statement because we haven't been asked to find X in the question. Now let's substitute our information in. We've got that PE ratio of 2.85. On our numerator, we've been given the market price per share. It's $2.55. And our annual earnings is what we're trying to find. And we divide that by the total number of shares that there are, which is a million shares. So now we have to do some transposing of algebra. Well, let's multiply both sides of our equation by x divided by a million. Notice I've transformed that into a fraction now. That will make it a lot easier for us to work with. So we've got 2.85 times the fraction equals $2.55. So now what I've done here is I've actually taken the 2.85 and I've divided that by a million. It gives me a very, very small decimal number with five zeros and then 285x. And then I'm going to divide both sides by that very, very, very small decimal number and I'm going to get annual earnings of $894,736.84. You may wish to pause the video just here just to see if you can work through that algebra again on your calculator and see where I've gone with that transposing of the algebra. Well, that's all we have time for on this video. I hope it's been really helpful and perhaps it's given you a little taster of what's involved in the stock market. I've only just scratched the top of the iceberg on that one. Our next video is going to talk about the goods and services tax, GST, and then we're going to kick off a new video series. So do stay tuned for that one. And the best way to stay tuned is to be a subscriber to the channel. And I'd like to welcome some of our new subscribers this week. Thank you very much for joining us. And why not follow us on McClutchy Maths? That way you'll hear about every new video as we release it. And also some fun memes and jokes and tips and some throwbacks. Thank you very much once again for joining me here at McClutchy Mass. I'm Natalie McClutchy and have a wonderful day.